two generations of the Paliakis family have sold meat of all kinds in Athens. Pavlos Paliakis shows up early in the morning to pick up the choicest cuts from his brother. Now they're worried. 70% of the beef and pork consumed in Greece comes from other EU countries. If the liquidity crisis drags on, the Paliakis won't be able to pay their suppliers. If the drachma is reintroduced, its value will collapse and we won't be able to import anything, not even meat. On Sunday, Pavlos voted yes for the austerity policies the EU is demanding. Now he's worried that the majority no vote will end up leading to Greece's exit from the euro. I don't want Greece to leave the euro. Then all the austerity measures up to now will have been for nothing at all. The Paliakis family have made a lot of investments in this Hiros and Suvlaki shop, for example. They hope it will be immune to the crisis. Even if the taxes do keep rising and eating up all the profits, we go on the assumption that the customers will have enough cash left over to afford a souvlaki. Now, if the Grexit becomes a reality, Pavlo says the no voters in the referendum will be to blame. Ioana Kapatu opposes the austerity policies demanded by the EU. She voted no. No doesn't mean that, you know, we want to be bankrupt or we want to exit the EU or anything like that. It's because we want to support the, cho the choice we made in the elections five months ago. It's because, you know, we want to see through our government and, you know, what we voted for. In January, Ioana expressed the same hope and optimism that prompted many Greeks to vote for Alexis Tsipras' left-wing Syriza party in the parliamentary elections. But things haven't gotten any better. On the contrary, the supply situation has only deteriorated. I took my car out and I went to get some gas and there was like a 20-minute line there. And, you know, it's scary because the last time we saw, you know, uh, phenomenons like this was during World War II and right after it. And my grandparents saw it, not me. Author and essayist Nikos Dimu has been analyzing the Greek nation's troubles for years. He wasn't surprised by the results of the referendum, especially among young voters. People voted yes or no based purely on feelings. The ones who are anxious about the future voted yes. The ones who aren't afraid voted no. And the young people are less worried than the older ones. That's obvious. He believes the majority of the no voters failed to consider the consequences adequately. It's a dilemma. I asked them, OK, you voted no. What comes next? There was just silence, because nobody knew what would come next. Now, Ioana Kapatu is getting worried. Negotiations with creditors have broken down, the lines at the bank are growing, and the Greek economy is edging towards collapse. In January, I knew that there was a worse time to come. Okay, I, I didn't know it would be under this sort of form and everything. But, you know, everyone knew that this wasn't the bottom. There was still a lot more, you know, to go through. So I guess I did expect that, you know, we would have a lot more of, you know, the crisis in our country. I just didn't know it would be in this sort of shape and form. The Tsipras government is caught between creditors and voters' expectations. Pavlos Paliakis, too, had high hopes that the new government would get things under control. But during their election campaign, they said they'd repeal the tax increases from the past few years. So, of course, lots of people voted for Tsipras and his party. Of course they would. They were hoping that after all the years of extreme budget cuts, everything would change. Six months after the elections, Alexis Tsipras won the referendum with much of the same promises and tactics. Tsipras came and said, I will liberate you from the austerity measures. It's clear, everybody would rather live high and not cut costs. But who's going to pay for it?
It's Greece's younger generation who have the most to lose. Pavlos Paliakis can only hope that, even in the thick of the crisis, people will still be hungry for his souvlaki. Now, events in Greece are also being watched anxiously in Portugal, which, like Greece, also had to be bailed out by international lenders four years ago. Since then, Portugal's economy has started growing again. But with high debts and rising unemployment, Portugal is still one of the most vulnerable economies in Europe. Life in Lisbon moves at a slower pace, and the atmosphere is a lot more tranquil than in some other European capitals. The Portuguese don't usually make a lot of noise about anything, and that also applies to the Euro crisis. The economy is starting to grow again, especially in the tourism industry. A symbol of this are the huge numbers of motorcycle taxis on the streets of Lisbon. Companies often run by jobless people who have found a niche market. The economic upswing Portugal is enjoying at the moment is mainly thanks to tourism. Tuba's small business is in downtown Lisbon. He follows the news on Greece with mixed feelings. After all, the Portuguese have also made considerable sacrifices. And he too would prefer to find a job in his proper line of work. I feel sorry for the Greek people. But you have to abide by the rules. If you borrow money, you have to pay it back. The Portuguese government introduced a harsh austerity program, cutting 30,000 jobs in the public sector, reducing pensions, and raising the sales tax. The repeated protests at the measures were in vain. Now the average standard of living in Portugal is lower than in Greece. A lot of elderly people are particularly angry at the cuts. They say they're paying the price for the economic upswing and strongly support the Greek government. They are really doing something for the people. Portugal is on the sidelines. Here they cut our pensions and raise the sales tax. But the Greek government is protesting. A central food bank in Lisbon. There are a large number of soup kitchens in Portugal. They help stave off the worst for the one million elderly who have less than 270 euros a month to live on. Without the help, they'd be lost. Things have improved slightly, but it is still very difficult for the elderly. Food is distributed in residential districts, an everyday occurrence in a nation in crisis. Half a million people receive help from the food bank in the capital alone. Without this aid, they'd go hungry. Things are bad. My son is ill. We only have 300 euros a month. We couldn't survive without donations. The people here say the Greeks need help. But what do they have to give? Portugal is a divided nation, hovering between large-scale poverty and cautious economic growth. It often receives praise from Berlin and Brussels for its austerity measures, but the people here are paying a high price. And because this is Portugal, they don't make a fuss about it. <laughs> 